Welcome to the second Aronis Method. The second arrondissement is known in French as a deuxième and is one of the 20 arrondissements of Paris. The district is also referred to as Sentier, Montegoy and Bourse as these are specific areas of the second. The second is probably best known for its ties to textile manufacturing. In fact, thanks to its central position in the heart of Paris, by the 19th century Sentier had become the beating heart of the French textile industry. The second is also where you'll find the Bourse, i.e. the stock exchange of Paris. If I'm honest, one of the best ways to get to know the second arrondissement is simply to stroll around and see where your feet take you. For this reason, I highly recommend, as in all of Europe, to wear really comfortable shoes and avoid high heels. As you can see, there's cobblestones pretty much everywhere. Otherwise, yeah, just set aside a couple of hours to wander the streets and check it out for yourself. The Place des Petits Pères is one of those central squares that's teeming with cafes spilling out onto the streets and the clinking of wine glasses. It's somewhere you might well want to have lunch and even if you have other plans, you'll still want to check out this early 19th century spot. The main highlight is the church Notre Dame de Vie Courtois and the square itself is named for the Augustan monks who lived in a former monastery on site and were nicknamed the Little Fathers. Place des Victoires is a grand circular place just a short walk away from Place des Petits Pères. It's centered around an imposing Roman style equestrian statue of Louis XIV and borders the first arrondissement. And now let's talk about one of my absolute favorite places to visit, which is Gallery Vivienne. Sumptuous and splendid of all the covered passages of Paris, of which there are around two dozen remaining, Gallery Vivienne is probably the most ornate and also probably the most famous. Galerie Vivienne was constructed in 1823 and was built at the behest of Marchu, president of the Chamber of Notaire, on the site of the former Vanel de Saron Hotel, Mansion House, and the Petit Père Passage. Completed in 1826, the passage was originally called Passage Marchu, though this was swiftly changed to Vivienne. Since its outset, the arcade has been in close competition with its neighbour, Galerie Colbert. At 176 metres long and 3 metres wide, the passage is most certainly not the smallest in Paris and, since 1974, the gallery has been listed as a historic monument. The passage is actually open on a daily basis and closed overnight, however, once inside there are a few shops, as you might have been able to see, and also a number of bistros and cafes where you can sit and have a drink. My personal favourite is Le Grand Fille et Fils, which is where you can enjoy soaking up the details and the sumptuous decor of the passageway while enjoying a glass of wine. I think you'll soon realize when you're in the second arrondissement that everything is pretty close to one another and so Rue Montmartre is also very close to the other places I've mentioned. So whether you want specialty coffee, to do some grocery shopping or even go clothing shopping, Rue Montmartre is just charming. It's also a little less known than nearby Rue Montegoy which we'll get onto next and so you'll often find it easier to get a playable at places like Le Tambour. Running through the first and second arrondissements, Rue Montegoy is a lively market street filled with bustling cafes, local grocery stores, and is where you can really get a feel for how the locals live. I have a particular fondness for Rue Montegoy as I actually used to live just a couple of streets over in the second arrondissement, close to Sentier. As such, I used to walk down Rue Montegoy on a near daily basis, enjoying the many shops and frequenting the local boulangeries to get my daily French baguette. Largely pedestrianised, Rue Montegoy is well known all across the city for being one of the best foodie destination streets. However, shopping aside, truth be told, one of the greatest ways to enjoy Rue Montegoy is by sitting on one of the many cafe terraces spilling onto the street. There's no one particular place you should head for a meal, as most are up pretty decent, typically French fare. Perhaps the most famous shop along Rue Montegoy is Stora. Illustrious, beautiful, and something of an institution when it comes to Parisian bakeries, Stora is the oldest still in operation boulangerie in the entirety of the capital, having been in business since 1730 when it was founded by Louis XIV's pastry chef. <laughs> Thank you.
Rudy Nile is named for the River Nile in Egypt and was first attested as far back as 1590, when the street was referred to as Cul de Sac de la Corderie. From then on, it has since been known as the Rue Pierre Boyer, as the Cour des Miracles, and then Rue Neuve Saint-Sauveur in 1622. The cobbled lane has been known as its current name Rue du Nil since 1867. Up until a decade or so ago, the street was largely forgotten. All of this changed with the arrival of chef Gregory Marchand when he opened an iconic Frenchy restaurant on the road. Since then, the Frenchy brand have operated several other shops in the street. Just a few minutes walk away, about two I guess, you'll find the Passage du Caire. As I might have mentioned earlier, there are so many covered passages in this area of Paris that it's the perfect place to head to if it's raining because you know you get sheltered from the rain. This is actually the longest and narrowest covered passage in Paris and it stretches an impressive 360 meters. It's also quite unique in the fact that the arcade forms a fishbone shape in its layout. If I'm honest, the Passage du Caire isn't the most aesthetically pleasing of Parisian passageways. However, there is one that I want to show you now, that's Passage des Panorama. It's one of those places that I recommend people go, even if it's their first time in Paris, because it's honestly just so beautiful. Passage des Panorama is actually the oldest of the covered passageways of Paris still in existence, and has remained largely unchanged since its construction in 1799. Step away from the Grand Boulevard, which is at one end and you'll find that the passage is very vintage looking. It's actually worth noting that this passage is best known for stamp collecting and postcards. I love coming here when it's really quiet early in the morning as all of the shops are open and you can really browse for unique souvenirs from your Paris trip. <laughs> One of the more unique places to dine in the passageway is Victoria Station, although you should note that it doesn't have the best reviews. I've never personally gone here because of that. However, it's always completely packed. And the cool thing about it is that you actually dine in vintage train carriages and it's even got the same kind of lighting. So it's just a very cool experience, I think. As you've probably seen, there are literally so many places to go out and eat in the second arrondissement. Some of my favorites have been places that I've just seen a place that looks a little bit busy and so I've gone to check it out and it's honestly been so tasty. With the more expensive places, you'll definitely want to book in advance as these kind of places now have booking systems. However, for the most part, you can normally just turn up in a cafe, wait a bit and wait to get a seat. And if you've made it this far, then thank you so much for watching this video on the second arrondissement and I'll see you next time. Bye.